I am going to uh, start off with reading, and unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot up his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his his name before my father and let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches this is the letter addressed to the angel or the leader of the church in sardis the fullness of the spirit and the fullness of the church he rules with power and is supreme in his authority over his church Again, Jesus knows their works. Nothing is hidden from our God. They have a reputation of being alive, but not about the Father's business. They were spiritually bankrupt, accomplishing nothing of eternal value and no significant threat to the kingdom of darkness. This church received no commendation from the Lord because they were dead. Though dead, Sardis was not hopeless. And that always gives us the same kind of hope, that blessed hope, that assurance that Jesus will rescue us. Because it's never too late with Jesus. He is the resurrection life. And he calls Sardis to awaken and strengthen what little spiritual life remains in them. He says, remember the word of God, which you have heard and received at the first. Keep it and repent and return to the truth that they once had believed. If they fail, Jesus will rob them of everything that matters at a time. There remained a few faithful souls. Their garments remained unspotted and they walked in fellowship and purity with the Lord. The promise of the reward is to those who overcome compromise with the world. They will receive a garment of triumph and purity. It is absolutely, it is an absolute necessity to cover, be covered in the Lord's garments because this will be their assurance of eternal life. And in Revelations 20, 12, Jesus says, I saw the dead. I mean, John says, I'm sorry, John says, I saw the dead small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and the dead were judged, and out of things written in the books, according to the works, and verse 15 says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So we need to be certain that we are walking with the Lord and that our names are in this book, this book of life, or we will not see eternal life. Those who overcome will not be naked and ashamed. Jesus will confess their names before the Father and his angels. The letter to the church in Sardis ends with the appeal to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Avoid apathy and compromise. Be clothed. 3, 7 through 14. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I will that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, 
and he shall go no more out. And the name, and I will write upon him, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Here Jesus is addressing the leader of the church at Philadelphia. And this is the church of brotherly love. This city was known for its peddling of Hellenism, which is Greek culture. So with this peddling of Hellenism, they were also declaring the gospel as they went along. And Jesus portrays himself to this church as holy and the word Alethino, and it conveys a genuineness that Jesus is the real thing and he is the reality. He has the key of David, the one with all the governmental power and authority to shut, to open and shut doors. And that is according to his will. He knows their works and finds the church at Philadelphia to be faithful. He tells them to look at the open door of opportunity that he has put before them to spread the gospel and that no man will be able to close it. Additionally, Jesus found this church to have three characteristics. One, they relied on him. They lived lives pleasing to his name and to his character. He finds no fault with the church at Philadelphia. Jesus tells them to take presence. He will vindicate the church of Philadelphia before their persecutors and their enemies will know the love of Jesus. Because they have held fast to the truth of the word with patient endurance, Jesus promises to keep the church in an hour of trial that is to come upon the world and to test those who dwell on the earth. And I believe that is a promise for us as well in this current time and that we will see the fulfillment of this. If we walk uprightly and uprightly before the Lord, he will keep us from this hour of temptation that is to come upon the end time world. He tells them to watch. He is returning. He tells them to continue to remain steadfast and stable in order to avoid being robbed of their crown. The reward to those who overcome is they will be made a pillar of strength, stability, and support, and they will have a permanent residence in his temple. Written upon them will be the name of God, the name of his city, New Jerusalem, and a, na- and a new name. They will be marked as belonging to the Lord. The letter to the church at Philadelphia ends with this final exhortation to those that have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. May we hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Be two, and this will be the last church that Jesus addresses. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyesap, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches." Here Jesus addresses the leader of the church of the Laodiceans. An interesting fact about the city of Laodicea is that their main water supply came from the hot springs in Hierapolis, which was about five miles away. It arrived to the city lukewarm. Jesus reveals himself here as the amen, the final say. He is a faithful and true witness and the origin and the author of all creation. He knows their deeds and their pretentious 
condition. Note, this church, the church at, the, at, at Laodicea, receives no commendation. They are rebuked and corrected. He calls them a lukewarm church. He finds them to be nauseating, and he vomits them out of his mouth. They were not cold water, which provided a refreshing, and they were not hot water, which provided soothing and healing, but they were lukewarm. The Laodicean church was indifferent and hardened through the deceitfulness of riches. They had an abundance of riches and and got themselves caught up on the hamster wheel, always seeking to increase their monetary wealth. They were secure, they were happy, they were successful and unsatisfied, totally deceived of their true condition. Jesus calls them wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. The word wretched comes from two Greek words, tally, to bear, and kouros, which means hard and calloused. Their hearts were callous towards the object of pity. They were unable to understand their true state. They were poor and beggarly, trying to find satisfaction in worldly goods and aspirations. All along, Jesus is patiently standing at the door and inviting them to come in and to dine with him and to feast on what he had for them. They are blind. They lack spiritual vision in part due to their misplaced affections. And lastly, they are naked. They have no words of righteousness. Jesus advises them to buy gold and only be received by faith in him. Buy white raiment to cover their nakedness and finally buy ISAP so that they can see their true condition. He chastens them out of his deep love for them. He commands, he commands, his command is to quickly and earnestly repent. See, I stand here outside the door, continuously knocking with an invitation to open the door and to come and feast with him. His desire is for the Laodicean church to give up chasing materialism and self-reliance and to resume the intimate fellowship that they had with him in the beginning. The the reward to those who overcome is the privilege to share in Christ's rule and reign in the millennial kingdom and into the eternal age. Just as Jesus was victorious and received from the Father the rule and reign, they were saying to the churches, let us leave the spiritual, I mean, the selfish pursuits of greed and self-centeredness and devote ourselves to God and to others. This concludes the final letter to the churches. And I'd like to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for this time and I thank you for your word. It is life in spirit, Lord God. And it's something that we truly need. I pray, oh Lord God, that if any of us are away from you in any area, Lord God, that we would repent and return to you again and to do the things that we first heard and believed on, Lord God, and how joyful a time it was for us when we first came to you, Lord God. Restore that joy to your people, Lord God, and let them heed the word that you are telling them, Lord God. It is not just a matter of hearing it, but it is a matter of doing it. And we are all able to do the word you have called us and you have given us everything we need, Lord, that pertains to godliness and life. And I am so grateful that your word is true and that if we just do it, we will see the results of the word in our lives. In Jesus name, amen. Continue to bless your people today. In Jesus name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all for listening. And I appreciate the opportunity to do this. Thank you. Amen.